Guys, what is going on? Guess what today is? That's right. That's Wednesday online experience here at Open Door Church. And you know what? You're tuning in on an amazing day because today we're going to continue our sermon series called When God Says No. I mean, last week you heard Pastor Jerry, you heard Pastor Pauline, and you heard you heard myself talking about uh, a few of the things that happen when God said no in our lives. And today, you know what? You have a treat. You have a special treat because Pastor Troy is in the house with me right now. Oh. Come on. Can, can y'all, where, where's Pastor Troy? Come on, man. Say Ta-da. hi to everybody. <laughs> Pastor Troy is in the house. And you know what? It's going to be almost like a mentoring session. We're going to talk like if we're in our living room. You know what? We're actually there with you right now. Hey, I'm going to answer this phone. No, no. Just keep on talking. <laughs> yes, Lord. <laughs> yes, Jesus. I'll tell him. Come I'm so on. sorry. I'll just turn off my phone. Hey, listen, it's okay. I, everybody sees everybody sees that happen during church all the time. They just saw me. It just they just saw it happen with me. So I'm gonna. <laughs> but guys, I'm telling you, man. You guys are on. You guys are on a special special Wednesday, and we're gonna continue this topic because it's it's an awesome now topic. Mm. A lot of people are talking about like, man, why did this happen to me? Why did coronavirus happen? Why is God saying no? Well, today we're gonna go into it, and Pastor Troy. Man, it's just so good to have you here with us, man. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Well, I'm excited about being here. I wasn't wasn't planning on it. You weren't planning on it. <laughs> and we just got through doing this big thing in the prophetic life, yeah. and this was the content. We were actually talking about this, and then I said, I asked you, because I was going to go to lunch, and you were like, oh, man, I'm, we're basically doing the same thing, but yeah. it's going to be on Wednesday night. And I was like, I want in on that. And you are very nice to let me in, so thank you. Thank uh, thanks, you BT, that. man. It's always good to have you, man. And again, you, you are like, you're like my, my daddy here in Burleson. You're thank my you. mentor. And... And I know that people want to hear a lot about stories about when God said no to you mm. and how that all transcribed going forward. Okay. So you ready to get off into this? Let's go, man. Okay, man. Well, for one thing, I, I do not live in a life of a lot of no's. I live in a life of a whole lot of yeses from, from King Jesus. And, and I think I'd like to start off this because I love this whole subject. I love it because, because it, all the promises of God are yes and amen. He's already said yes. Yeah. And it's something that I really have a hard time convincing people of. And it's a big, huge part of our ministry is that telling people, you have a yes from God, so you need to go, go, go. And that's on you. And the way it works in the Bible, biblically, okay, so you got, you got 39 Old Testament books. You got 27 New Testament books. You know, the, the, the dividing line is the presence of King Jesus. Up until the presence of King Jesus, and the way it works in the Old Testament is everybody has a no until God gives you a yes. Hmm. That's how the Old Testament works. Mm -hmm. In the New Testament, everybody has a yes until God gives you a no. He has a go, go, go. Mm -hmm. Like, you're not even like, I don't know, does God want me to reach anybody for his kingdom? (laughs) Yes. Uh, Well, I don't know, does God want me to be happy with my life? Yes. Oh, I don't know, does God want me to do what? The answer is yes, unless he steps up and says no. And that's not very often, but when he does, we need to pay attention to it. So if you're somebody who's used to, living in the Holy Spirit, and you have learned to live in the yes of Jesus, and you have replied by having a yes in your spirit, which is a big, huge part of our ministry, a big, huge part of everything that we do, it might just rock your world yeah. when God shows up and says no. Yep. It's, it's, a lot like, um, it's a lot like how God speaks. Like I'm always paying attention to the things that God talks to me about everything, mm-hmm. and I have it's been a huge part of my walk is to learn that God wants to talk to me yeah. about everything. But every now and then, he'll say, I'm not talking to you about that. <laughs> like, what is that all about? He's like, no, yeah. I'm not going to talk to you about that. But please, I need to know this, this, this. He's like, no, you don't. I'm not going to meet you there yeah. in that place. It, it has nothing to do with your assignment. It has nothing to do with your walk. It has nothing to do with your relationship with me. I know that you think it does, but it doesn't. And so... I pay attention to the things God doesn't talk to me about, hmm. and I also pay attention to the no's that I have. So, what, what are some what are some examples, like in your life, Pastor Troy, that were no's, but that you wanted them so bad to be yeses? Oh my gosh, so many, man, <laughs> so many. Like, what's a big like? God, I want that, oh. and it was like drought, 
silence. Yeah. Yeah, so the old Garth Brooks song, you know, thank God for unanswered prayers. Oh, I talked about that last yeah. Wednesday. I love right it. Right on. So, yeah, you actually did. You yeah, actually I did talked about Garth Brooks. Yeah, I saw yeah. that. I was in Florida this last week, and I saw your show on Wednesday night. I saw it, and it was good, by the way. Thanks, man. And so, yeah, so, like, okay, well, thank God that that didn't turn out because that was as high as I could possibly dream. That was as good as I could think. It was as high as I could think, and it turns out that God had something way better. Yeah. Okay, so... So this is the principle, and this is what I want everybody to know that's watching this, is that when God gives you a no, it's because he has a greater yes. His, his, his yes is so much greater than his no. And he's not afraid to say no, but it's not, it's, not his, it's not his nature for his redeemed people. I mean, here's what he does. He literally says this, okay, now that you're saved, I will cause you to inherit all things. You have access to everything I have access to. I mean, just think about that. Yeah. I mean, so that's his heart. That's his mentality. And that's the way that he is. But if he, if you're like, okay, God, I'm going to press into this and this is what I want. And if he steps in, he says, no, no, I'm not. It's because he, he's not going to settle for that. He has something so much greater. And you're like, no, 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 I really can't see that. And what's real is you can't see it in your maturity and in the place of your walk when that happens, you can't see it. All you can see is, am I going to be offended or am I going to praise Jesus? Yeah. That's all you can see. Man. It's the choice that you have in that moment. And uh, that can be a lonely place because it's just you that's yeah. going through that. And you're gonna, and you can't fake it in that moment. Yeah. You're either going to worship Jesus and go on, or you're gonna be mad and you're gonna eat worms right. and you're gonna throw your fit and spin off for a while. And so, uh, and I don't think that God does it to prove that you will throw a fit. He already knows if you're gonna throw a fit or not. He already knows that. But I believe that God will literally protect us from things that would spin us off from things that just wouldn't work out. We can't understand how it wouldn't work out, but it just wouldn't be good. But he will also protect us from having a lesser life than what he has for us. Mm. And I do have some big time examples of that. I mean, this, this building that we're in, a yeah. lot of it actually, some of the easiest things I can point to, AJ, has to do with buildings. Because like this building that we're in right now, um, it's worth untold millions of dollars. Yeah. And, and um, for all my haters out there, you know, rain on you. <laughs> <laughs> this building was given yeah. to me. Yeah. This whole building, this whole campus, all these buildings up and down this street, man, was given to me. And years before the Lord made that manifest, um, years, man, before that happened, we were in this little bitty tiny building, the entire church, not, not just the sanctuary, but the church, the hallways, the bathrooms, uh, the kitchen, the children's church, all of it was less than 4,000 square feet, okay? And you remember that building. Yeah. And uh, we were there for almost two decades. We weren't there for, you know, two days or two weeks. <laughs> uh, you know, we got there in 95 and moved out in, uh, well, we moved out in 2010. So we were there for 15 years. Wow. Yeah. And... Um, and we moved out in November of 2010. We sure did. So, so I, we were there for forever. And AJ, there was this building between my house and the church on that road called 1902. That was a church building that had been abandoned and it was beautiful. It was big. Um, it had a auditorium that would seat probably 200 people, maybe. And that was like a million people to yeah. me. You know, yeah. a 200-seater auditorium? Are you kidding me? Um, it, had, it, was, it was beautiful. Uh, had, it had a real baptism in it, and we were using a horse trough, which we still do. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we still, <laughs> we, still, we still do that. I mean, we still bust out the horse troughs around here. But uh, I, I was just like, oh, my gosh, it had real stained glass in it. Yeah. And it was just abandoned, and a guy was storing pianos in it. And I started going out there, and I started telling the Lord, Lord, I... My church is never going to grow if I can't get a bigger building. I, we, I need help. And this is right here. Nobody's in it. And it's like right next to our, where our church is already at. It's perfect. Yeah. And then I found out that the guy who owned it was a Christian and a spirit-filled Christian. And I'm like, perfect. And then he gave me a key to the place. I said, go in there and go. Because I told him, I said, dude, I'm after your building, man. He's like, well, dude, you need to go after, you need to go after my building. Yeah. 
And I said, okay. And he goes, here, here's a key. Go in there and walk around and look at it and go pour oil all over it. Claim it. And I was like, okay. Yeah. And so I did that and uh, took my family there, walked around that building, claimed it, started talking to this guy. This guy was a good man. He was a good Christian man, and he was a good businessman. And he's like, I'm not giving you that building. You're going to have to buy it, and this is what it's going to take for you to buy it. this, 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 this. I went to some banks. Nobody would loan me anything. Uh, We were super ridiculously poor. (laughs) And um, I went before the church and said, guys, is there anybody here that can help me with a down payment on this or whatever? Look at this building. This would be perfect for us. And look at the outreaches we could do from it. And look at this and look at that. And I even had this plan that we would move the church there and keep the building that we were in and do and make that the outreach yeah. center. And it was perfect. Perfect. Or maybe we'd make that the youth facility or whatever's perfect. Yeah. And uh, after a while, I, I, again, nothing happened, nothing happened, nothing happened. After a while, I just began to beg God. And I, wow. I give you, this is a true story. I went up there one night in my truck and sat up there all night long and prayed all night long and cried and cried and cried and said, God, why will you not give me this place? Why do you want me to be so poor? Why do you, you know my heart. You can trust me. Well, I, I don't understand why you would not do this for me and do this. My congregation is your congregation. Yeah. These are your people. Why don't you want us to have something nice? I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand. Hmm. Well, I didn't get it. <laughs> and we remained in that building for 15 years. And, uh, and I would have to drive past that building every day going yeah. to my little bitty tiny place. Well, I'd sit there empty. And just, I'd pull my hair out. Yeah. Go, that's so ridiculous. Well, now I have to drive past that building. It's right on Chisholm Trail Parkway. And if uh, anybody ever drives down to Chisholm Trail Parkway, right when they get around, uh, when they get b- between the exit of 1902 and the exit of uh, 915, mm-hmm. there is a big empty church building on the left-hand side of the road if you're going south towards Cleburne. This is the building I'm talking about. Well, I take that Chisholm Trail Parkway every single day to this multi-million dollar facility that was handed to me in 2013. And I have to pass up God's no to get to my yes. Wow. And his yes is so much greater than his no. And it's it's just about, it's the waiting game. Ooh. It's literally the waiting game and it's not on our time, it's on his time. You said something right now that, that... it's not up to us to understand the Lord's will. It's not, it's not on us. That's what he's designing. That's what he's designed for us. And sometimes we try to get in God's mind, and that's not yeah, our place. Yeah, good luck in getting in God's mind. You know what I'm saying? It's like, God, like I know you have this for me, and we come up with all these crazy things in our head, and then we get to a point where now we actually believe what we're saying, and then when it falls flat on our face, uh, it was on you, man. You told me this, and now it's failing. Yeah, that's right. Like, yeah, we're crazy people. It, it's like, and God's like, what, what are you talking about, bro? Wait, wait, wait. I didn't have that for you. You yeah. said that. Yeah. You said you used my name in your own prophecy, and I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> it's like, what are you talking about? That's so funny. And, and I feel like there's a lot of us that do that, I, yeah. and myself included. Yeah. And I've done that so many times in my past where it's like, yeah, the Lord, the Lord is telling me to do this, and, and I'm like doing all these things in my head, and I create this illusion that I need to have it, I'm gonna have it, and sure enough, I fell, and it's like. And then you come to a whole nother illusion of the character of God towards you. Yes. And uh, that's also not good. Uh, because the conclusion that I came to out of that was God wanted me poor. And the conclusion I came to out of that yeah. was the Lord didn't have a big church for me. <laughs> the conclusion, and that was not what he, he never told me that. Yeah. Never. He never told me that. He just simply told me no over that one building. Because had I got that one building, if I'd have got that one building, I would have never got the building in Joshua, which put mm. us on the radar for Pastor Gloria giving yeah. me the building in Burleson. And I can see all that now, but... I couldn't see, all I could see then was the heart of, man, we are really struggling in this tiny place, having multiple services for 60 and 70 people yeah. <laughs> and working like That's animals right. and, 
And, and plus, I mean, you had to have a four-wheel drive, go to church there. Yep. I mean, everybody come into our parking lot, and nobody, nobody with a nice car would come to our church for years because you get stuck in the parking lot. And I mean, it was terrible. <laughs> it was terrible. Our oh PA was God. terrible. Everything was bad because we were, we were an outreach church that fed poor people. And so the conclusion that I came to, because God didn't give me the thing I wanted so bad, the conclusion I came to was, okay, God wants me poor. He doesn't want me to be a big church builder. Um, he just wants me to just feed people and stay in the trenches, and that's what I'm going to do. What well, turns out, that is not the truth at yeah. all. all. All that is the truth is that God said no. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. And what God already, ha- God already had a yes God. for me to have. I mean, I don't know anybody else. Yeah. And I know a lot of people, bro. I know people all over the planet. I don't know anybody. Anyway, and I'm sure there is, but I don't, but I don't know, that has been given a multi-million dollar mm-hmm. campus and went from 100 people to thousands and thousands and thousands of people in less than 10 years. Mm-hmm. And went from, went from saving, you know, a handful of people a year out of sexual trafficking to, you know, we're, I, I don't know, I don't know what it's going to be this year. It'll be at least 2,000, might even be 3,000 people this year. We're already at 1,700. Yep. And it's just halfway through the year. And I, I don't know anybody that's had that kind of trajectory because, because what God did with me was so supernatural because his yes was so great. And I literally, he still continued with his yes, even though I accused him of bad character. And not wanting good things for me whenever he told me no. And and we see that all like, over Jesus. the world now. Like we see what it like, man. oh, this happened to me, it's on you, God. Like and, and we make that mistake. We instead of running towards God's heart, we assume what he wants for us. And it just for me, I'm I'm still learning that, Pastor Troy. Like, I'm just gonna chase you. Yeah. I'm gonna chase you, Lord. I'm gonna chase you. And the promises that you've given me, I believe that I'm gonna see it in my lifetime. And I'm saying lifetime, I'm not saying in a year, you know? I'm, yeah. And it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's tough. It's tough. But dude, but dude, you're seeing the other version of it. Yeah. Because yeah. I didn't have any, any of these great things did not happen for me until I turned 50 years old, just like it was prophesied to me when I was 29. Yeah. Right? Same thing with John Paul Jackson. John Paul Jackson, uh, what was his name? Um, Bob Jones. Prophesied, prophesied to John Paul Jackson when John Paul Jackson was in his 20s. Bob Jones prophesied to John, uh, to John Paul Jackson and said, you will become the authority of dreams and mysteries on the planet Earth. Wow. And everyone will look to you and you will be seen as, the, as a great man of wisdom. You will be so highly favored. You will be so successful and it will not happen until after you're 50 years old. Wow. And what's amazing is wow. my breakthrough... My breakthrough yeah. happened when I was on John Paul Jackson's show. God. And it didn't happen until I was 50. And uh, so I, 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 it, here's, this, this is what I know about the will of God. <laughs> when it comes to the will of God, we know what God's will is as far as his heart and his character is. Mm-hmm. Okay? But we, don't know the, we, but we don't know what God's will is as far as how he makes outcomes happen. Come on. Okay. So, like, okay, we know that he gives us a future and he gives us a hope, Mm -hmm. all right? But the way to that future and hope, there's a billion variables in it, Yeah. okay? And he does not control those things. He simply adjusts things. He'll give a word. He'll give his anointing. He'll give his this. He'll give his that. He'll give his promise. And how we respond in the midst of all those changing variables is to bring us to a certain end, a certain outcome. Right. And so sadly, for some of us, some of the promises that he does have for us are probably for when we are younger, but we don't mature and we had to mature. We had to have this happen or we had to have that breakthrough and we missed those things. And it was one of the key variables to getting us to that place quickly. But he's so patient. He's like, oh, like for me, if it wrecked my plan, I go, no, I'm out. He goes, that's okay. I got this plan. I got the up. Wait, wait, got to change that. I got to change that. (laughs) No, no, come on. You're there. Oh, brother, he made another step. And he's just constantly dealing with us like that. And we cannot understand the mysterious way that that works. That's the Lord's omnipresence yeah. just yeah. surrounding us, man. And, and I've yeah. also have come to the conclusion that there's promises that are made for me and there's generational promises that I'm not going to be able to see. 
Do you know what I'm like? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Like, I, and I think about Abraham. I think about like, oh, you're going to see descendants, the amount of the stars. <laughs> Abraham wasn't alive to see mm-hmm. it. He's not alive now to see it. Mm-hmm. And, and I feel like sometimes, again, we mistake, we mistake that. Like, oh, I'm, I'm going to do it. Okay. And if it doesn't, we're a failure. Well, that's the way. Okay. That's the way it always is, okay? Even whenever, even the prophecies of Jesus, okay, man, the Messiah is going to show up, right? Mm-hmm. They look at it in Scripture, and it looks like, it looks like either there's two gods, there's two Messiahs going to show up, or there is going to be one Messiah that somehow fulfills two diff- the character of two different people, because one set of Scriptures who the old, the old rabbis and sages would call the, the mystics, they would get in there and they would say, oh, I know what that is. That is Messiah ben Joseph. He's hated among men. He's scourged by, he's got straps on his back. Uh, he's hung with other thieves. Uh, they, 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 they throw lots over his garment. They all are like, dude, he's poor and he's despised. Okay, then they would see all these other scriptures and they say, oh, this is Messiah ben David. He's a warrior. He's, he rules with a rod of iron. Uh, he doesn't take no for an answer. He's bad out. He's awesome. Look at who he is. He's, he's one altogether beautiful. And it looked like two different, mm-hmm. you know, it, and so there was like these denominations. What they didn't see was when it comes to prophetic things and when it comes to, when it comes to prophetic promises, even the Messiah, it's like this. It's like, man, dude, I know that, you know, when you was in a band, you was on the road the whole mm-hmm. lot. And I remember I was in, I was in, a, a bus band, a band, a band bus in the late 1980s, early 1990s. And I was so excited because we were going to, we were going to New Mexico to play. And we got out past Monahans, Texas, and it is so flat and so ugly. You get out towards Pecos and you can begin to see the Davis Mountains. And you're like, there's some mountains. Oh my gosh, the mountains. Yeah, it's so awesome. Mm. They're so, it's so beautiful and so awesome because that part of Texas is so ugly, right? And then when you get close to them, what you find out is the range of mountains is not one range. It's a first range, and then it's a big valley, wow. and then there's another valley, wow. and then there's another big range. So good. And so that's the way I think that, and when I saw that, the Lord spoke to me on that bus and said, that's the way my messianic promises are right there. They looked and they thought, they thought I was going to show up at one time and do all that. No, no, no. There's a big valley of at least 2,000 years between the first time I show up and the second time I show up. The conclusion that people came to whenever Jesus died on the cross is, the other one's false. It's just this. And it wasn't true. There was still 2,000 years of a valley, and the rest of it still has to be fulfilled. That's right. And so I, I, just would, I would just wow. say that when God, again, getting back to this, brother, when God says no, he has a greater yes. That's right. When, when you come against something that is devastating, it you cannot come to any conclusions that God loves you any less, that his promises are not real. Yeah. You have to be very careful, man, to guard your heart and decide, I'm going to worship Jesus in that place. And we got we to gotta understand that we don't see things the way God sees things. Mm-hmm. I mean, we see us. We see the little things. And again, God is yeah. omnipresent. He sees it. I see you and 50 years from now. Like he prophesied to you, Pastor Joy, like when you were 29. I see you now, 29 year old kid, but I see you where you're going to be at 50. I already see it now. And um, I, I have these notes, Pastor, can I read this to you? Yeah. And I'm going to, I put down here, King David uh, pleaded with the Lord for the life of his, of his and Bathsheba's infant son. David fasted and he prayed for days, but on the seventh day, the child still died. And God said, no, no, David, you can pray, you can fast. But it's still a no. David responded in a way that is a model for us all. What he did, he accepted that what God had done was right and was good. And the first thing he did, he went to the house of the Lord and he worshiped. And that's all in 2 Samuel. And to hear that and be like, God, I, my son, my son, save my son. Day after day after day for seven days. And God's like, now and then at the end he's like you know what first thing i'm gonna do i'm gonna go to the house of the lord and king jesus god like i love david so much like thank you thank you god for being for being good for being good 
He wouldn't allow himself to come to any other conclusion. Ooh, it's like, like to hear that. I can, I can give you another, another terrible layer to that. <laughs> and it's this. When he went and sought the Lord, okay, mm-hmm. we know that he did for seven days. He laid down on the ground. He fasted. He didn't eat. He didn't drink. He didn't get up. Okay, I want you to think about that, mm-hmm. which means he didn't get up to go to the bathroom yeah. for seven days. Where, where would he do that at? At the tabernacle of David. Where is that at? And who can see that? <laughs> Everybody can see it. The tabernacle of David didn't have any walls around it. Yeah. It had the Ark of the Covenant, and that was where the presence of the Lord was. But it had no walls, and everybody in the kingdom had access to the tabernacle of David. And they watched him for seven days do that. Hmm. They watched him beg, plead, and cry before the Lord. And you can just, you can just fill in the rest <sighs> of the blank. And he's the king. And he, he shamed himself in seeking the Lord before the people so much that they thought he was crazy. And then when they found out the baby died, they didn't want to tell him. They're like, because he's a nut, and they're not telling him what he's going to do. And then he's like, what happened? Did the child die? And they're like, yeah. He's like, okay, I got to go take a bath. I need something to eat. Y'all got something? (laughs) They're like, what are you doing? He's like, I got to go in the presence of the Lord. I got to go worship God. I I got to, listen, I got to. I got to get my act together before the king. Like, why would you do that? He said, well, if, I, if my son cannot come to me, then I'm going go to go to where my son is. And he goes, uh, Jesus is the only boat afloat. I wow. ain't leaving that boat. Wow. Okay, that is a different mentality. Yeah, that's... That's different. And that's yeah. what we got to strive for. I know, we got to like, go after that. We got to go after like, that. Like, I ain't bailing on God. No, man. And, and <laughs> without saying more, like, something like that happened to me recently. And this Sunday, I had to go on stage, lead worship, and I had this T.D. Jakes anointing where it was like I was sweating perf- like profusely. I was, but I felt like I was a completely different place, to be honest, Pastor Troy. Yeah. I wasn't on stage. I wasn't in front of thousands of people. I was me and the Lord, and I'm like, and the songs, it, it, one of the songs was like, I've never lost a battle. He's never lost a battle. I could have gone into it, and I felt like I was defeated, but nah. It's not yeah. over. Because, yeah, because because you're not defeated. It's not. I'm not. There's there's no such thing as as a human being that doesn't experience personal tragedy. There's no such thing as a human being that doesn't experience loss, or guilt, or disappointment. And God is still God in the midst of all that. There was a, whenever it comes to King David, whenever he pronounced with his his mouth. So Nathan gets up and he says, "Hey, there's this guy." And, uh, you know, man, he, hmm. he's a rich guy, and he, he's got all the sheep in the world, and he goes to this one poor guy, and he steals the one poor guy's sheep and, 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 and feasts on this one sheep when he had a whole herd of sheep to feast on. And he's like, what should be done to this guy? And David said, he needs to be put to death because that don't happen in my kingdom. And here's what I say. He has, to, he has to pay back four times as much. He goes, who is this joker? And Nathan said, you're that joker. Wow. Now, in the, in, the moment that, in the moment that Nathan did that, nobody looked as cool as King David. He's on his throne. Everybody is madly in love with him. Uh, Bathsheba's husband has mysteriously died in battle, and he loves him so much. He's married her, which actually he had had, a, had yeah. an affair with her, and then he had murdered her husband. And he looks so cool, and he's like, bring the prophet of God in, man, and let him, <laughs> let him prophesy. And everybody's like, man, King David is the man. He, I, I can just imagine him that day that he looked better than he's ever looked yeah. in his whole life. Now, here he is six months later laying on the floor, man. on the floor, not going to the bathroom for a week in front of that same group of people going, this is what I've done. This is, this is between me and you, God, yeah. and I don't care. I've, I've looked cool before, and I've hidden my sin, yeah. and I, I'm not into that anymore. I don't care if I look cool or not. I am asking you for a different outcome. Please let me have a different outcome than this. Because what he had, as soon as Nathan pointed at him and said, you're that joker. You killed Bathsheba's husband. And that was the one wife in the world he had. You have a whole harem, dude. Mm. And God is not pleased. This is what he did. This is, this, is, this is where King David is so different than other people. Instead of him going, off with your head, this guy's a liar, he falls down and says, I have sinned before the Lord. I mean, he, he took it. He took it, man, in front of everybody. 
And because don't you know that there was people inside that room that were pulling out their yeah. swords and they were going to kill him? It's like, stop, stop. This guy's telling the truth. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm so sorry. Like King Jesus. I mean, like he's, he's real. I have sinned before the Lord. And he begged and said, please, because he'd spoken the judgment. And the first judgment was, the first judgment was, this guy has to die. And Nathan said, because you repented, you're not going to have to die. But, but, you're going to have to pay it back four times. And you know David saw four of his sons die? God. God. David saw four of his sons die. And he knew that when he was seeking the Lord. He knew it was just, and he knew that God was a just God. And he knew that he had spoken yeah. it, but he still went before the Lord and said, we got to be able to find some other way. Jesus himself went before the Father and said, can we find some other way to do this? Man, I was literally about to say that. If, if God said no to Jesus, his yeah, son, that's right. God, can you take this away from me? Yeah. Father, can you take this away from me? Yeah, and he's like, no. Nope. Can't. And, and I, I feel and like... What I'm, is the conclusion you're going to come to in yeah. that? Yeah. Oh, I can feel the Lord right oh, now. Oh, man. And it's like... <laughs> it, it's like do we think that God doesn't love us because that happens? No. Yeah. I mean, God sent his son yeah. because he loves us so much. His only son. And we can't take a, a simple no, or not even a no, like not yet. Mm. Just be patient, man. Be patient. I mean, Jesus said, is there any, is there any way you can, you can pass this cup from me? Yeah. I guarantee you that was the prayer that David was. Is there any way this judgment cannot come on me? Mm -hmm. Wow. Is there any way, man? Wow. I mean, Lord, you know I love you, and I know that you love me. There's got to be some way. There's got to be some way. And God's like, no, can't. Because the promise had to come through Solomon. God. The promise had to come through Solomon. And God's like, no, this is a mess. But your mess caused a variable that it's going to have to play like this. The yeah. promise is going to happen. But your sin has caused a variable. And I, yeah, there's nothing else I can do about that. Just stick with me. Hey guys, what do you think? What what do you guys think? This is awesome, Pastor Troy. We're 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 gonna be a little bit sh uh, short on time. We're about to close up, but uh, and we're now we're gonna do like our final thoughts, Pastor Troy. But I just want to say again, and I, I said this in the prophetic life, how how inspiring all this is, and how inspiring you have been in my life, Pastor. Like just to see the way ha God has worked in your life, the promises that have been fulfilled and still prophecies are coming your way now, more, yeah. a thousand times more. And yeah. to see that being fulfilled. God is so good. For me, it's like, it's coming. To see that not only in you, but like in a lot of people here, oh, it's coming. I just got to be patient. I have to be patient. I have to walk with the Lord. I have to run after his heart, not my heart, not what I want, not my needs. Let his needs, let his will be done as it is in heaven here. And man, if there is something that I want to challenge you guys to do is if you've gotten a no right now, all we can do is keep going after it. Keep going after the yes. If you're going, if your circumstances all around you is a big fat no, know that God has a big fat yes waiting for you. We just have to be patient. We have to endure the things that God has promised us. And that's all we can do. I, I said this last Wednesday, when we, when we hear God's silence, and that's weird to say, but if he's silent, well, you're hearing it. You're hearing the crickets. When you, don't, when you feel his absence, mm -hmm. what's going on around us, all we got to do is trust in his presence. And like, God, yes, I'm down on the floor, seven days, fasting and praying, in my shame, in my guilt, and I'm saying, God, I love you and I will worship you. God. And I'll prove it. And I'll as prove it. As soon as he heard his son die, he's like, I'm going to go worship. I told God that was what I was going to do. He's, he's kind of awesome. David so That's so right. cool, man. I can't wait to see him and hug him, man. And just say, like, <laughs> like, King David, you have made such a huge difference in my life. I've learned so much about Jesus by looking at you, you know? And I pray people be able to say that about us. Yeah, man. I, I, want, I want to close by, uh, by saying this. I... For years and years, you know, Leanna and I lived, uh, we raised not only our four biological kids, but we also raised a bunch of other people's kids mm -hmm. that left their kids with us through the years. Um, some of them we would just have a few weeks. Some of them we had for years and years and years, um, which is just part of ministry. You yeah. know, that's what you do. And, and uh, um, 
our house was, you know, 1,200 square foot, on a quarter of an acre, a little bit tiny place. And a part of that was also, too, a big part of our walk with, with God uh, was a big part of my walk this way was because I came to certain conclusions when God told me no. Mm-hmm. Okay? And one of those was I thought God wanted me poor. I thought, I thought that that was how a man of God was supposed to serve the Lord. And because of that, half the time I didn't have electricity. I, I mean, literally not having electricity in my house, raising all these kids. It's a wonder CPS didn't come and take, take my kids away from me. You know, Leanna would put cowboy hats on the boys. She'd put bonnets on the girls. We'd have candles inside the house. We'd cook outside on the cooker. And uh, we called it olden days. And the kids loved it. They thought it was the greatest thing ever. I hated it. I, I hated it. And Texas is so hot, you know, and it's so hot in the summer. I say all that to say Leanna, would, Leanna and I would go because we knew that we served a good God and we knew we were going to have breakthrough. We've always believed in breakthrough. We've always believed that God was going to do something for us. We would go and tour mansions. And it didn't make us feel bad ever. We want, we're like, someday God's going to bless us with a big monster house. And when he does, I want to know what I like. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to wait until I have that opportunity to try and figure out what I yeah. like. So we would go and act like we had a million dollars and we'd go and visit million dollar homes. And that was what we did because we couldn't afford to do anything. And we loved it. And we would map out, what did we like about the kitchen? What do we like about the bathrooms? What kind of crown molding do we like? What kind of colors do we like? What's important? Should we have a pool? Should we not have a pool? This, this one, we were going through untold poverty for years and years. And this was what we did as a hobby. Yeah. And we got into decorating. When we had no money for decorations, we got into decorating. What do we like? What do we not like? What do we like? What do we not like? And all this. I say all that to say that there was a house that Leanna and I found at least 25 years ago, if not 30 years ago, out in Glenrose. And where it was at on the other side of Glenrose was on this hill, and it is so beautiful, and it's so amazing, and it's the coolest house I could ever imagine. And Leanna and I went to that gate, and we poured oil on it over and over and over again. God, we want this house. This is like the ultimate dream I could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. And you know what God said? He said, no. (laughs) He said it first year, no. Second year, no. Third year, no. 30 years later, he's still saying no. Mm. Fast forward into 2016. In 2016, my book hit. I was on John Paul Jackson's show. Then I was on God TV. And then uh, I got started getting invited to do people's TV shows. And then God started giving me different income right. streams. Business people started inviting me to be a part of their business, yada, yada. Everything took off. And, and suddenly I'm in a position to pay off my old house and to get a new house and a bigger house. And I told Leanna, let's go see if the dream house, let's just go see. She's like, okay. So we drive out there, and no, it's not for sale. And we're like, oh, man, I just knew God was going to give us this house. And whenever we left, instead of turning right to go the highway, we turned left just to see what was down that road. Mm -hmm. And it dead-ended into this unbelievable place, this big, beautiful gate. And we could barely see the house and all these trees, this great, big, huge barn. And this guy is putting up a for sale sign there. While, wow. while, while we're turning around in the cul-de-sac. And that was kind of a prophetic marker for us because 25 years earlier in our little house, they were putting the sign up whenever we were passing that house to go look at another house. Yeah. It's like, look, they're putting the sign up. I told Leanna and AJ, I ain't even looking at that house. That house too big. That house too crazy. I, there's no way. No way we could ever afford anything like that. Ah, put in there. She yelled at me. So I said, okay. So I go in there and bottom line is, I meet the guy. She goes in the house to go look at the house. The lady takes her in the house. I go down there to the back. And the bottom line is, this guy asked me, are you the guy that's on the radio? And I said, yes. And he goes, are you the head and not the tail, above and not beneath guy? I said, yeah, that's me. And he's like, oh, my gosh. My wife is going to freak out when she finds out that this is who you are because we're praying that godly people will move into this house. And so they listen to me on the radio every single day. And as a matter of fact, you can't pick up my radio sta- you can't pick up my radio station in Dallas Fort Worth all the way out there on the other side of Glen Rose. Mm-hmm. So they would drive they would drive to Granbury to go to lunch every day to listen to me from between eleven thirty and twelve. Wow. 
And the lady comes running down with Leanna. She's like, you got to hug me. You got to hug me. And I hugged her. And she knows who we are now. She's wearing a shirt that says Uganda because she, they follow us to such a degree. We'd never met before. Wow. But they were inspired to start doing missions in Uganda. And to, they went to a different church and to talk to their church and start going to Uganda. And they did. So the bottom line is, he said, uh, you, I, I, can, can you afford this house? And I told him, no, I can't. And he said, who's your banker? And I told him, he said, I know your banker. <laughs> Tim Whitlock from Pinnacle Bank. <laughs> and he goes, I know him. And he pulls out his phone. He's got Tim's number on his phone. Wow. And he starts telling him, you're going to have to give this guy a loan to get this house. And Tim's like, well, we'll see what we can do. And he told him, no. Tim went only approved me for half of what they were asking for the house. And they still sold me that house. Wow. And that's Third Stage Ranch. Wow. Half of what they were asking for that ranch. Because that's the most that, I, that the bank would approve me. And they still sold me that house. Here's the deal. When I sit in my living room and I look out my window, I can see that house. That The dream house. The dream house. And it's on the next hill. When I walk my property and pray, I can see the dream house. I can see God's no from his yes. And his yes is way, way, way better than his no. Wow. Come on. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Do us a favor. Drop a comment below as you're watching this. As you're watching this, drop a comment. Tell us what has been your no right now. And what can we pray for? What can we go after for you guys? What can we do this together? I mean, rap it to you. I mean, this yeah. is, tell us. Or what has been your yes? Forget the no. What has been a, a no in the past and a yes uh, now? Let us know, man. We want to we wanna, we wanna join you in, in this, uh, in just this celebration because it's awesome. Guys, I mean, this has been amazing. I love ha I love having these talks with Pastor Troy. Thanks, man. It's just cool to have you here, man. And thank you for having me. It's it's awesome, man. Well, you're the one that designed all this, so <laughs> dude, thank you for allowing us to do <laughs> thank this. Thank you, thank yeah. you so much. I'm grateful. But again, man, join join us again next week. Uh, Pastor Pauline is going to be talking awesome. about uh, when God says no, and so join us. And again, drop a comment. Make sure to share this. Make sure to. Uh, like this and share it to everybody all over your social media platforms. Pastor Troy, any last words before we leave? No, man. Just uh, listen. God always says yes unless he says no. Yep. That's how that works. So go, 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 go until God tells you no. And when God tells you no, know that he has a better yes. Come on. Come on, man. Guys, this has been the Wednesday online experience uh, here with Pastor Troy in the house. Man, I love you, Pastor. Love you, man. Thank it's, you. It's good to be here. Guys, we will see you again. Uh, come this Sunday. Come this Sunday. Pastor Troy is going to be here with our special guest, Jerry Ann Webb. Make She's sure amazing. to join us. She's a great. She's going to be on stage with me, yep. and uh, I get to introduce her to the whole planet Earth. Yep. That's what we're going to do. So come join us. It's going to be awesome. And uh, Pastor Troy, close it off, man, with your famous, famous quote. All right, guys. Listen, I love you guys. Call y'all the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, and highly favor the Lord. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye, y'all.